Well, good evening, folks. Welcome back to Encounter Bible Study. Uh, tonight, we're going to be in John chapter 11, verses 38 through 57. Please take out your Bibles. We're going to be um, wrapping up uh, chapter 11 and the story of Lazarus and his resurrection and the power of Jesus Christ. Um, we're going to be, uh, the title tonight is Believing is Not Seeing. And the issue I want to address tonight is the fact that God is not only determined to save us, but he's also determined to do something else. And I'm going to be talking about that a little later on here. So again, please take out your Bibles. It's John chapter 11. It's verses 38 through 57. And I pray that you're blessed by the study tonight. For those of you who are watching us a little later on on YouTube, welcome. So glad that you're tuning in and you're watching this um, from the comfort of your home. So we have a familiar saying. And the saying goes a little something like this, seeing is believing. And in a lot of cases, seeing is believing, especially when it comes to things that are physical. And so sometimes somebody will come up to you and say, you know what, um, uh, this has happened or this is going on. And it's a little hard to believe. So you say, unless I see it for myself, unless I can touch it, feel it or experience it, um, I'm not going to believe it. And for a lot of things in life, in the physical, absolutely. Um, you know, science is based on this and trust relationships are built on our ability to test and prove and see and touch and feel. It's part of the human physical experience. Um, but what we're seeing um, in, in scripture is that faith isn't always about what you can see or what you can touch or what you can feel. That sometimes faith is the hope of or the belief that this can happen, even though I've never seen it. Um, for example, Abraham was given the promise of the promised land, that he would have descendants that would be, you couldn't number them. They'd be like the stars in the sky or the sands of the sea. And the thing is, Abraham never actually got to experience uh, the fulfillment. He never saw the fulfillment of, his, um, of the promise that was given to him by God. And yet Abraham believed. And there are many in scripture who believed without seeing. And so tonight we're going to uh, be reading uh, about an event you and I didn't get to see. As a matter of fact, um, Christ is going to challenge people's faith in our story tonight. And John is sharing this story with us. Uh, as a matter of fact, John shares with us in scripture seven miracles. And every time he shares one of these major miracles by Jesus, he, he follows it up with saying, I'm writing this so that you would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and, and that in believing in his name, you would have life. And, and that's why these things are in scripture. And, and Paul points out, and it's in Romans chapter eight and uh, chapter one, sorry, it's verses 18 through 20, where he goes, all people have adequate evidence of God's eternal power and divine nature through creation, but they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Here's the thing. Have you ever met somebody who was doggone determined not to believe that no matter how reasoned your argument, no matter how much evidence you provide, um, uh, no matter how much proof there is, there's just no changing their mind. They simply do not want to believe. And yet here we are in a story tonight where if you had witnessed this miracle, um, given that these people, what they had seen, everybody has, should have fallen down on the ground and worshiped Jesus Christ as God, as creator of heaven and earth, because nobody Nobody had the power or the ability to do what Jesus is going to do now in this story. So once again, uh, for those of you who are joining us on, on Facebook, happy you're here. Hi, Sarah. I'm glad you came out to join us tonight. We're going to be again in John 11. Uh, 38 through 57. I'm not going to ask Sarah to read all of that, but please follow along in the points in your Bible. You can read the story. And before we jump into the rest of this, uh, again, my point tonight is, is going to be this, that God is not only determined to save us, but he's determined to grow our faith. 
I've been talking about in our sermon series that he's also determined that we would know him. So he's determined to save. He's determined that we would know him. And he is determined to grow our faith. I love this, God. Let's have a word of prayer. And then let's get into this study. Father God in heaven, tonight as we wrap up the story of the resurrection of Lazarus tonight, I'm asking, Lord, that the Holy Spirit be poured out in power that you would be here, that you would show up, and that you would lead and guide the study tonight. And I'm praying tonight that you would be our teacher, that you would direct the conversation and our thoughts and lift up Jesus for us, that we may behold his glory, his love, his passion, and his patience with all of us because of the great love that we see in Christ Jesus. Please open the word to us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So tonight, uh, please, again, take your Bibles and, um, and open them up. And there's something kind of a little funny going on with my Zoom tonight. So if, if I'm kind of distracted over this way a little, um, please uh, bear with me. Um, hi, Sarah. Uh, I'm seeing you differently over on Facebook than I am on Zoom, and that's kind of why I'm kind of back and forth a little. Let's get into um, the story tonight. And um, again, it's John, it's 11, 38 through 57. And Sarah, can you hear me? Are you able to respond? Okay, if I didn't see movement over on the Facebook side, I wouldn't be sure that this is working. Okay, I'm going to read verse 38. I want to start off with this. And um, it reads, so Jesus again, and I'm reading from a very modern translation. It's going to be a little different than what you have in your Bibles. So Jesus again, being deeply moved within, uh, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus was still angry, troubled, as he arrived at the tomb, a cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Now, based on what we learned last week, based on what we learned last week, what was the source, was the source of, of um, um, oh, I, Sarah, I'm hearing you through the, uh, the Facebook page. I'm hearing myself through your Facebook, uh, yeah, your here, computer. Uh, I'm hearing you twice and Zoom is freezing on me. So now I see myself twice. Something is not quite right. I'm thinking so. Um, so folks, please bear with us in the technical difficulties. I don't necessarily want to jump out um, and, and come back in and disrupt this process. So let's see if we can make this work tonight. Again, Sarah, thank you for joining me. Happy to have you here. So gotcha. based on what we learned last week, what was the source of Christ troubled or uh, frustrated spirit. I'm going to take you back to last week, and Sister White was talking about this in the Desire of Ages, and she gave several reasons as to why Christ was weeping, why he was frustrated, why he was troubled, why he, you might have been able to even in the Greek describe him as being a little angry. And, and the first was this. He wept. He was troubled because he was moved by their grief. Uh, again, we're told that what affects us, what pains us, uh, that, that's not lost on God. He, he's not unaffected by what happens to us. And so, and so we know that Jesus felt their pain. That wasn't lost on him. And, and so in part, Christ is weeping with them. But then we move through and Sister Way points out that he was also frustrated. And when he looked upon the scene, again, he wasn't looking at this with human eyes. But that, that as he looks at the scene, he's frustrated by their lack of faith. He's just shared with them that he is the resurrection and the life. And, and, and it, he even said to, to, to Martha, if you would believe Lazarus will live again. 
Mm-hmm. And, and what does she do? She points to the future rather than the present, um, you know, Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And if you just believe, he'll live again. And they started wailing and crying as if there was no hope, as if there was um, nothing Jesus could do about this situation. And then we also discover uh, both in scripture and and from the desire of ages, that Christ was also troubled because the same people who were going to witness this miracle, these same people who were going to give glory to God in about 10 minutes or five minutes or however long it took, are going to be the same people who are going to betray him. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, no sooner does he perform the miracle and Lazarus is raised from the dead, then they act, there are people in the group who go running to the Jewish leaders and they report the incident in such a way that now the Pharisees and Sadducees are by far more determined to kill Christ Christ than they ever were before. Mm -hmm. And, And so the one question I wanted to ask is, how do we know that they failed to believe? You know, here's Christ saying, I'm the resurrection and the life. And if you would believe... So how do we know that they didn't believe? Because of their reaction. What they did immediately after mm-hmm. performing the miracle. They they still and they, they didn't believe him because some of them thought he was the as above. Some of them figure he really isn't the son of God. It was just total lack of faith. And as you said, that's what really frustrated Christ. And even as we come down, if I may plunge forward, it is exactly mm-hmm. the same sin we are committing today. A total lack of faith. Okay. To know that we can, we don't really believe that we can just put it in God's hand, let go and let in. Wow. And, 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 you know, one of the things, Sarah, as I had looked at this story before, you know, when we read, we read Jesus wept and, and, and we see a, a Jesus sympathizing with people. And yet we completely miss in the story, the lack of faith that would be enough to make, you know, God himself cry, mm-hmm. um, to have Jesus there and to respond the, with the wailing and the bawling and the crying and, and they're, they're grieving like the pagans do as if there's no hope. Mm-hmm in the presence of the creator himself. Mm -hmm. And I'm, 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 I'm reading this story through fresh eyes. I'd never seen it this way before. And, and the, the question I wanted to ask next, and this is the one that really got me is why do you think nobody asked Jesus if he could perform this miracle, especially after saying I'm the resurrection and the life, they asked him for all sorts of things, why do you think nobody was asking him um, if he could perform this miracle? They didn't believe he was who he said he was. S- simply boils down to that, I think. Yeah. Right? I, I, I mean, think it, when I think back on it, Martha and Mary had you know, said, ask Jesus to come and heal their brother. Mm-hmm. Um, they had... Um, you know, they, they believed he could have performed the healing, but are, well, I'm, I'm wondering, like, why aren't you believing or even asking this? Well, oh, I think I that to... they, they believe that he could have performed the healing if he had arrived before their brother died. And so there was, a, as much as they both loved Jesus tremendously and they had a relationship, there was still that that lack of faith that total lack of absolute faith that jesus requires of us the faith that abraham had to know that he is going to provide himself mm-hmm. a sacrifice and so and so even sometimes we, we we ask god father would you please do this we number one we don't ask according to his will and even when we ask according to his will and, we, and he takes his time to do what he wishes to do, accomplish to his purpose, his pleasure, to his honor, and to his glory, we take it back from him and say, I don't think you can handle it. Mm. That's double insult to God. I, and, and that's a powerful point you just made. Yep. As, as I think about it, 
Um, I think the, the biggest uh, or, or the greatest proof that they had unbelief is that nobody asked them, to, can you actually do this? Yeah. Nobody asked. They just wailed. They just cried. But nobody actually thought to ask Jesus, uh, Lord, is this something you could do? Like, can you pray to God and raise him from the dead? And, and, and again, I think this goes back to what we've been told so many times. We do not receive. Because we do not ask. And imagine if Jesus hadn't been determined to raise Lazarus from the dead, mm -hmm. if he hadn't been determined to use this situation to grow their faith mm -hmm. and, and, and to make the point that he is God, mm -hmm. Lazarus could have stayed dead. Mm -hmm. He was dead for four days already, beginning to rot. Uh, and, and we're going to touch on that right away. <laughs> um, and, and so they, they knew, I mean, of course, they knew he was dead. But again, this, this not asking. And again, you have to wonder how many times in life something in our life has died mm -hmm. and it looks impossible. Mm -hmm. and, and we think there's just, uh, you know what, we put a stone over it mm -hmm. and, um, and, and we've walked away not thinking to ask God if he could actually do something about this. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and maybe they're not asking because he didn't uh, answer the original request. And, and, and I wonder if sometimes we get so boxed in in praying one thing, we don't even think to pray another. Mm -hmm. like, like, God, you didn't move in this way. Well, how about you move in this way, Lord? And, and I, I think we just, I think we, we give up all too easily sometimes. Too quickly, too quickly. I'm also thankful, though, that, that God can even move past his frustration with us mm -hmm. and go, I'm still determined. Mm -hmm. I'm still determined to redeem you and, and save you. And, and I love that about God. So going to that, he's been dead four days, Martha's words. Um, I, and I wanted to ask, uh, and for those of you who are joining us on Facebook, please, um, I love your comments. Uh, when you write them into the chat, please feel free to be a part of the conversation. I do read your comments and I'm looking, uh, I keep an eye over on the side, which is why my head turns uh, to the left uh, from time to time. I, I wanted to ask, what is the significance of Martha's words? Lord, he stinketh. <laughs> I wanted to go King James on that one um, but because it's a, it's a powerful word. Um, again, the significance of he stinks. Stinks represent sin. Mm. To me, stink, stinks represent sin in our lives. We are stink when we, mm. when we sin and continue to go down in sin. We stink. Okay. We become, we become clean when we respond to God's Holy Spirit and uh, we surrender to him and, 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 and throw it at his feet and say, I am sorry, God. And then he begins to clean us up. Mm. That's mm. my thinking. Uh, and, 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 and I like that. I'm also reminded that there are places in our life that can be dark mm -hmm. and they can be difficult mm -hmm. because they're dead. Like, like, I mean, how often have we seen dreams fall apart, mm -hmm. hopes, wishes, desires, mm -hmm. and, and the thing we've longed for, the thing that matters to us, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's died. I remember the song, uh, Will the Anchor Hold? And the author of the song, the guy who writes this song, Will the Anchor Hold, it was sung by Ray Boltz, said, I've had dreams and I've had visions and I've watched them slip right through my hands. Mm -hmm. And what the author of the song was talking about was that his newborn baby um, had died right there in his own hands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are times when we have these hopes, these dreams and these visions, and it's like, we got robbed. But here's the thing. Resurrections only take place where something has died. Mm -hmm. That's the point of a resurrection. 
-hmm. if it hasn't died, it doesn't get resurrected. And mm -hmm. I think that when Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life, I think that Jesus trans transcends just the grave. Mm -hmm. I, I think that as, as there are times we have a dream, we think it's died and, and God brings it back, but it's better than before. Yes. And it's it, resurrections take place in the painful parts and places of our lives. Mm -hmm. And we don't like to go there because it's painful and, and it stinks in our soul. And, and sometimes it, I, I think that we might, some people might not want to come to Jesus because they look at their past and they go, that stinks. Or we look at something we've done and we go, that stinks. And, and we're thinking God won't touch it. God won't intervene in it because it stinks. And, and I think that, that God doesn't care how bad it smells. I think he cares whether or not we can trust him with it. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how painful mm -hmm. or how dead it's been or how long it's been dead, mm -hmm. can we trust God with things that, that, that we, we don't want to touch? But he's able to resurrect. Amen. Amen. So I wanted to ask in, in light of that, the fact that just because it stinks, that doesn't mean God will avoid it. I, I wanted to ask, how does Jesus respond to their lack of faith? Compassion. Mm. I think out of compassion, he is, as much as he saddened, his compassion exceeds his sadness because mm. he recognizes that we are mere mortals, flesh and blood, and 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 and, and the, the depth of our um, our lack of faith comes from the fact that we we need a, a, a complete rebirth. Mm. We need a rebirth, and we need. The, the baby steps, that's why we, he, 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 there's an anal analogy of, of drinking milk before you eat hard food. Mm. And I remember the story where in one, one part of, 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 of the country, Jesus could not perform a miracle he wanted to perform right. because of lack of faith. And he said, because you do not believe, I will not do this here. And he went to mm. the Samaritans, I believe, where they believed, and that's where he performed the miracle. And thousands, and maybe more than thousands, mm. surrendered and accepted him for who he really is. Mm, I like that. I like that. When I look at the story and, and I see Jesus' frustration uh, on multiple levels, um, regardless of that, regard, and, and now I'm reminded that before I go further, I'm reminded of the Bible text that says, whatsoever is not a faith mm -hmm. is sin. Mm -hmm. They're in sin. I, and I had not considered that before as I had looked at this story. They are in sin and, and, and because of their lack of faith. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus responds to their sin with grace. Mm -hmm. roll back the stone mm -hmm. <laughs> right and, and 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 again i you know as we talked about in the grace series the god responds to our sin and now our unbelief mm -hmm. with an inexhaustible ability to forgive to redeem mm -hmm. and to bless mm -hmm. people are in sin there's a lack of faith they're not believing on jesus they're not asking on trusting in jesus and jesus responds with roll back the stone i'm still determined to redeem you i'm going to redeem your faith i'm going to regrow your faith and because jesus knows there's a work still to be done in their hearts and in their lives and that's why the invitation says ask and it shall be given mm. the door will be open seek and you shall find and if you ask not, you receive not. If you seek not, you find not. If you do not, mm. not the door will not be opened. And they all come together. Absolutely. And, and so I, I look at this and I realize the one thing I love about the Bible is how often these people mess up. 
how the biggest problem in scripture is not so much sins, but the sin of unbelief. Mm -hmm. That that all quite often when they fell into trouble, it was because of a lack of belief. But Jesus also went a bit further. He said, mm. without faith, it is impossible. That's a huge word. That's a huge word. Mm -hmm. When we know that there is nothing impossible with God, yet he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And, and here we have an impossible situation. Right? So it's impossible to please God, a God who can do the impossible. Exactly. God can do the impossible. Um, but the, the one thing he, he, he will not do is, is he will not force you to believe, yeah. coerce exactly. you to believe. Exactly. He invites you to believe. Yeah. And I know that God gets, uh, I know, Sarah, that, he, that God's grace, I, I have to talk about just how dependent I am on it for all the times I didn't believe. Mm -hmm. We all are. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's a sin that we talk about the Israelites. We talk about people in scripture, but we are the people in the Bible. Mm -hmm. there, there, there are times when we can see the mirror of ourselves in different people in scripture. And so, you know, when we talk about our favorite Bible character, I, I talk about the one I want to be, not the one I am. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and I'm glad that God does for us what he did for those people in scripture, that he moves beyond our sin and gives us what we need, which is his grace that redeems, blesses us, saves us, grows us. Because grace is far greater than sin. Absolutely. And it's available 24-7. <laughs> forever uh and, and so i love this about god mm -hmm. so i i wanted to ask and and again for the folks on facebook feel free to to answer i wanted to ask what does the stone represent in this story hardness of heart Ooh, i like that one Okay, I'm gonna write that down in my notes. Hardness of heart. That's I'm I'm Sarah. I'm just gonna add that one in right now uh, because that's a gooder, as uh, my kids would say. Yeah, because our hearts are stony, Pastor. Our hearts are so stony. Yes. So stony. It is only God's wonderful grace that could melt it. Uh, and and I love that. Um, uh, and, and I think it also represents um, the, the barriers that prevent us from seeing mm -hmm. beyond. Yes. You know, um, yes. It, even Christ in his own situation couldn't see beyond the tomb. Mm -hmm. And I think there are situations in which we cannot see beyond the tomb. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so I, I think, again, it, 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 it represents those, those barriers and those walls. Mm -hmm. it's, it's also... Those stones were also a way of saying, you know, do not enter. Um, the, the stone was, you know, there to say what's beyond here is not for the living. It is for the dead. Mm. Um, I think it also represented loss, that it was a memorial of what used to be rather than what is. Mm. And I think more importantly, um, and these are like tombstones, and it's the finality of 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 what has happened mm -hmm. that that this is it's what's happened here it's final mm -hmm. and we human beings can't change it sure. you know as much as i'd love to be able mm -hmm. to walk into a cemetery and and raise the dead and 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 people i love and people i love who love they love i can't yeah. none of us can none of us yeah and and that and so the stone, I love that. It represented our own hearts. It yes. represents the finality of the loss of, yes. of, of that what's over there is not for us. I mean, in scripture, we're told that the living have, the dead have nothing to do with the living or anything that's done under the sun. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's a chasm, there's a gulf, and we can't bridge it. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it so final. And it's mm -hmm. why we grieve, because we can't go beyond the stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Sarah, would you mind reading for us, if you have your Bible handy, I in do. chapter 11, 
verse 40. Could you read that for us, please? Chapter 11, verse 40 says, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? <laughs> and 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 I love yeah. Jesus is saying, I I I told you, like like if you believed, you're going to see the glory of God here. Like something God, some big God thing is going to take place. Mm -hmm. I, I I wonder what would happen if we said on a Sabbath morning, you need to show up because a big God thing is going to happen. How, who would show up? How many would we actually believe? Or do we even believe that on Sabbath mornings, God wants to show up or when we come to prayer meeting or, or prayer events or, or, or ministry events that God wants to do something big and, and show his glory. But he is and he does, Pastor. That's the thing about it. Uh. He is. When, when we get up and, and go to church on Sabbath, we go to God's sanctuary to worship him. Mm. If we have that embedded in our hearts, when we go to church, we know we go to meet with God. Mm. And that's the whole point. We don't go socializing with each other is the last thing we did bit of it to say hello, hi, and bye. But we literally go to worship God. And if we went with that mentality, we would receive the deep, wonderful blessing that our sweet Jesus has for us. But we go there with various different intentions, different feelings and emotions. We don't believe that we go to meet God. That's, and that's why we, we disrespect his temple. We chatter and talk and have our set. And I'm not pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. I am just talking about our mentality as Christians. And I believe it truly displeases God. I, I was thinking... Of, of something that, that Ellen White said, and I, I agree with her on this, that there are times the Holy Spirit could be falling down all around us mm -hmm. and we don't see it mm -hmm. because we're not looking for it. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about me. I, I have to ask myself, are there times when I've come to church or I'm coming where we're, we're, we're coming to something spiritual and the Holy Spirit has fallen down and I didn't get it because... I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't praying for it. I wasn't expecting it. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it happen to people where, where they, for example, they came to church and God did some big God thing and people were getting saved mm -hmm. and there were individuals who were missing it mm -hmm. completely. And you could see it in their spirit. You could mm -hmm. see it in their attitude, how they were talking about the event and, and mm -hmm. people there. And, and I'm going, People are getting saved here. The Holy Spirit's being poured out mm -hmm. and you're in the wrong spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to ask. So Jesus says, I, I would tell you, you would see God's glory. What glory do you think that Jesus is referring to here? The resurrection and the life. Because he was going to raise Lazarus. He's going to okay. give you life for the resurrection. A, for, a, a foretaste, or, or maybe not a foretaste, if I may say, because Jesus hadn't died as yet. But yes, maybe, maybe a, 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 a prelude to what was going to happen when he was going to be risen. Okay. Okay. I, I like that. I, I would also add to that. That, that God's glory is not just that shining, bright Shekinah glory that makes him a consuming fire. But I think that what Jesus is going after here is that you're truly going to see a revelation of God's character of love and, and who God is and what he's about. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Because when you think about Jesus, how he's determined to grow their faith despite their sin and their lack of faith. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's driving this? It's love. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, rather than call it going, I give up. I'm throwing my hands up in the air. I'm done with you, crowd. Oh. Like. What's it going to take? Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, and even after this event, even after he raises Lazarus from the dead, there are still those who are determined to kill him. And, mm -hmm. and rather than saying, well, hey, you know, like I'm, I'm done with you people. He comes along and he goes, no, I, I still want you to see what God is all about. Mm -hmm. In chapter one, uh, we, we were told 
and the word became flesh and dwelt among us mm -hmm. and we saw his glory, glory. Mm -hmm. right the glory is the only begotten from the father full of grace, grace. Mm -hmm. and truth mm -hmm. and and so god's grace is key to his glory Yes, yes, yes. Now, now in the Greek and the Hebrew, that word glory carries a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's a heavy word. Uh, mm -hmm. The Bible does not treat God's glory lightly. Oh, no. and, and it talks because it's talking about his worthiness, mm -hmm. his character, his mm -hmm. reputation, and his honor. Mm -hmm. It's like everything Satan attacked is wrapped up in God's glory. Mm -hmm. And so, so when you understand God's glory... Um, it was John Calvin who said, uh, he, he said, the glory of God is when we know who and what he is. Mm -hmm. And we never truly glory in him until we have utterly discarded our own glory. Mm -hmm. uh, so his glory is, 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 is so that God's glory prevails. Mm -hmm. and, and so when we know God's character of love, mercy, and faithfulness, Mm -hmm. combined with his divinity his righteousness mm -hmm. and and his his holiness mm -hmm. his character is his love his yeah. nature is is divine righteousness and holiness mm -hmm. when you know when you get that complete picture of god mm -hmm. now you begin to understand the glory of god because you know who he is mm -hmm. and you know what he is mm -hmm. amen who amen. he is is love what he is yeah. is divine and uh, that is why I like the fact that when we go home with Jesus, throughout eternity, we are going to see the, uh, uh, the, the, the living example of his love mm, by the pierced hands and feet. We will forever, uh, forever, forever see those marks that will remind us of the love of God that has placed mm. those marks forever in our Savior's hands and feet. Yeah, amen, amen. I, I think that Moses' words in Exodus 34, 6 complements what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. he, he asked God, I, I just want to see your glory. I just, mm -hmm. I want to get a peek at you, Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and God's like, okay, mm -hmm. hang on. You're going to get a peek. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it says the Lord passed in front of Moses. Mm -hmm. and, and and we got Moses calling out Yahweh the Lord the God of compassion and mercy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and mm -hmm. faithfulness mm -hmm. I lavish unfailing love to a mm -hmm. thousand generations yeah. I forgive iniquity rebellion yes. and sin yes this Thank is God for that amen a, amen mm -hmm. and and so this is this is the revelation that Jesus wants mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. people is, yeah. is I want you to see that we're slow to anger. We're filled yeah. with unfailing love and faithfulness. Mm -hmm. You're faithless right now, mm -hmm. but I'm still faithful. I still love you. I'm mm -hmm. still determined to grow your faith. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, wow. And that's why I sat in the foyer on Sabbath because I got there a bit late. So I sat in the foyer and, mm. and your message about the relationship with Jesus and your testimony about what he did for you, bring mm. you from Minioka to the level of intelligence to pass your exams and you know, how your friend encouraged you and, and how because yes. of that, another person was able to, to, to accept, to receive and accept this love that Jesus had, but Mm. It depended on having that relationship with him, going into his word mm. in the morning and, and giving him your first and your best. It's all that Jesus really asked of us. Just like the tithe and offering, he said, give me my tithe. I want the first, but only 10%, but I want the best. It goes right back to the beginning of creation, mm. right down to the end of time. It's it's powerful, powerful. Good message though, Pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, and and. Um, you know, I was thinking about this week about, and I was talking to God about it because of my, that story, it's funny how, you know, God uses those to even speak to me. Mm -hmm. And I remember how simple my faith was back then. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to somebody about it and, and about how sometimes I think we make things by far more complicated mm -hmm. than they need to be. Mm -hmm. We're just told you just simply need to believe yes so 
I'm looking at this and it's so I'm thinking, what does it take for Martha and Mary and the disciples to see the glory of God? And it took grace. Yes. And it reminded me that I can't even get saved. I can't even believe. Mm -hmm. I think the point of this story is for us is that without the Holy Spirit and without God, you can't even believe. It's true. Like God can be standing right there in front of you, giving you a promise, Mm -hmm. and you can't even receive it without God's help. Yeah. That's that's how lost we are. That's how dependent we are yeah. on God for for our our salvation. Yeah. And and I, I love what Sister White said when she said, "God's grace is found in God doing for laying us in the dust." Mm-hmm. Where's where's what ha- where do we go when we die in the dust? Mm-hmm. And He lays us in the dust, and He does for us what we cannot do for oh, ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's why we need grace. Yeah. And so often when I, I'm called to pray and, and there's a problem or there's a crisis or there's a situation, I always ask God to bring his grace to the situation. Mm-hmm. Because what mm-hmm. we all need is grace because it's without grace. it, I'm not believing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I can't even generate belief on my own, mm-hmm. which is why I, I love the, the man who said, Lord, I believe. Help That's my own my belief. Own belief. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's a prayer God does not ignore. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's, it's one that, that, you know, God does not turn us away from. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm, I'm looking at just the time and I'm looking at, at my notes here and I just want to make sure that we're going to be timely. And I wanted to ask, so here we have, um, John called this miracle a sign. What made it a sign? I really had to think about this one as I was kind of pulling it apart. And, and I think this is important. He said, it's a sign. And I had to ask a sign of what? I don't know. I'm thinking of Jesus's resurrection, but I don't know. I don't know if that's the answer. That's just a thought that came to me. I, I really don't know. I, I, the thought that came to my mind is that all signs point to something beyond themselves, that there's a greater, deeper truth that's going on behind what we just see. And, and, and those physical miracles I think point to spiritual truths. Mm -hmm. And I think that the truth for me goes back to Ephesians chapter two, where it talks about all of us are born spiritually dead and and that we are so dead that we can't even choose salvation for ourselves, but that God has to choose it for us. Could, could, could Lazarus choose uh, what color cloth they wrapped him in? No. Could he choose um, which direction they laid him when they put him in the tomb? Like they could have put him face down or head this way or that way. They could put him head down, feet up. No. Did he have any say in that? No, absolutely none. And and I think that's our condition when we're dead is that we can't even, like the dead, they can't choose anything for themselves. And God goes, you are so dead. You were so dead when I found you. I had to choose salvation for you because you couldn't choose it for yourself. Even even the people around Lazarus who were alive Mm -hmm. couldn't even choose resurrection for Lazarus. They were so far in their unbelief that Jesus had to choose the resurrection for both Lazarus and his family. Mm. And, And so... Here's the thing, that, that God is so determined to save us that he chose salvation before we even fell, knowing we couldn't even choose it for ourselves. That's true, that because the plan of salvation was long before humankind was ever born. Yeah. And, and so I had never really considered before that in this story, Lazarus couldn't choose the resurrection for himself 
and his family couldn't choose it for him. That yeah. God has to step into our sin and our unbelief. That's how great his grace is. That's how much he knows we need him. Yes. And yeah. I think that that's the sign is that God is willing and can and will step into our situation and raise us from spiritual death if we would yeah. just simply believe. Yeah. yeah. You know, Lazarus didn't put on deodorant. He didn't clean up his stink. Mm -hmm. He didn't unwrap himself. He didn't come out first. Mm -hmm. um, nobody was even asking on his behalf. Mm -hmm. Jesus simply came with the determination to raise somebody from the dead. Yeah. Amen. And, and I think it, for me, it points to there are times we fall back into our sin. Mm -hmm. There are times yeah. when, you know, we may even have somebody in our, maybe it even goes deeper to this, Sarah. Maybe we've got somebody in our life we're not praying for mm -hmm. because we think they're so spiritually gone that not even God can save them. Which is not for us to do at all. We have no, we, that is so wrong, but I, I see what you're saying. <laughs> but, but because I'm looking at Mary and Martha. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking Lazarus is so gone that Jesus can't raise him from the dead. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if we've stopped praying. And, and we all have to ask ourselves this question. Who was it we were praying for and we stopped? Who is it we're not praying for? We think that they're so far gone. And it's an important question that we think that God can't raise them from the dead. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's this, this miracle is the sign that Jesus truly is the resurrection and the life, not, not just that when we die, but that mm -hmm. we've got people around us who are spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how dead they are. Jesus can raise them from the dead. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, uh, just wanted to ask this one question. So Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. He, he calls him out, calls him out by name. And I think there's a whole other sermon in there in spiritual point how Jesus calls us personally by name. Mm -hmm. But everybody there witnessed this event. And there were still some who refused to believe. They had seen a miracle unlike any other in all of Israel, in the history of Israel. And they still refused to believe. And I wanted to ask all of us here tonight, why is it that people still refused to believe? Stony hearts. Stony hearts. One of the things I've, I've discovered in reading scripture is that miracles don't change hearts force doesn't nowhere in scripture have i ever seen force change hearts punishment didn't change hearts True. judgments didn't change hearts and neither did miracles only love changes hearts only love mm -hmm. and 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 i've discovered it and is is that unbelief has little to do with proof um i mean what what more proof could they ask for than for Jesus to raise somebody from the dead. Mm -hmm. I've been dead for four days. Yeah. Everybody knew he was dead. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, the reputation of Jesus was, I, I mean, the man who'd at the pool of Bethesda, 38 years waiting on a miracle, people who were blind, people who were lame, people who had leprosy. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is that unbelief has nothing to do with proof. It's, it's simply a refusal to see. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is a refusal to see beyond what you choose to believe. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in some cases, it's, it's based on, you know, selfish interests. I mean, the Jewish leaders wanted power. They wanted to keep themselves in control. They wanted to guard their, you know, their reputation. And... Um, the, 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 and, and I think the stony heart thing, um, Sarah, um, these were the most stubborn people on, on the planet. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. when we think about the the you know the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD mm -hmm. they held out so long mm -hmm. that that they ended up eating their own kids mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. even even the Romans couldn't get over how mm -hmm. stubborn and how hard hearted they were they even brought the tears of Jesus he wept over Jerusalem yeah absolutely and 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 so some, I think that what we need, I think that what we all need is a willingness to believe, just a simple willingness to trust mm -hmm. that Jesus is who he says he is, yes. that he is the son okay. of God. Yes. And, and, and John says, this is why Jesus did these miracles so that we would see, that we would believe mm -hmm. and that we would live. Yes. And as I shared on Sabbath, no Jesus, no life. That's right. And, and the only way we can have Jesus in our life is to believe in who he is, is yes. that he is God, that he is a God of love, mercy, and grace, mm -hmm. and that he is determined to save us, that he is righteous, and that he is holy, uh -huh. and that we can be partakers of, of not only the character of love, mm -hmm. but partakers of that nature of righteousness. Amen. And, and, and so this story was really about the fact that, and, and, and we're told in scripture, blessed are those who don't see, and yet, yet believe. they believe. Mm -hmm. But what I want you to see in this story is that God is determined to save us. Mm -hmm. He's determined to grow us. Mm -hmm. He's determined to help us know who he is. Mm -hmm. And he's determined to reveal his glory through our situations mm -hmm. and our changed lives. Amen. And I wanted to ask tonight, everybody who's watching and will watch, are you willing to allow Jesus to step into your situation and, and, and allow him to reveal his glory through your simple belief? Amen. And if you're struggling with that, just simply pray, Lord, I believe. Help my own belief. And that is the study for tonight. Amen. And, and so I, I wanted to thank uh, the folks on Facebook for coming out and joining us. Sarah, thank you for the interaction and your comments and, and, and the, the discussion Praise back God. and forth. Praise God. Uh, appreciate you and I appreciate the discussion tonight. Um, I'm thinking about things we want to pray about tonight. I want to pray for Vince. Um, the, his situation is, is, is critical. Yes. Um, the, the doctors have not given him long. That's true. And, uh, and Flo, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, I wanted to pray for Galena. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yes, I wanted to mention her. I'm glad you know. Is yes, I I've, I've, I've just recently heard, put it together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Galena, if you know, you're watching, we love you. And Vince, we love you. And we're praying for you and mm -hmm. your families. I want to pray for our students who have gone back to school. Mm -hmm. uh, our young people overall, please. Our oh, young people. Absolutely. All our young people are having so much struggle. Oh, let's pray for them. Absolutely. Um, I, I, and, you know, I, I want to pray for just the times in which we live. Mm -hmm. um, so many young people who are hurting, um, wrestling with depression and anxiety on levels we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. um, where we are seeing prophecy being fulfilled and set up big to be time. fulfilled big time, big time. and i, I want to pray for all of us i want god to grow my faith yes. i want him to grow uh my faith every uh, all of our yes. faith yeah and and to be found yeah in love with jesus and like yes. jesus i yes. want to be a partaker of that nature and his character yes. and that he would just grow himself in all of us amen amen let's close with prayer let's do that father mm -hmm. god in heaven lord we love you we love who you are amen. this god of mercy and grace determined to save yes amen. showing mercy and grace and and love to a thousand generations lord amen how amazing absolutely amazing mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. our god truly is an awesome god yes yes and lord we don't want to we don't want to lose faith we don't want to mm -hmm. give up 
mm-hmm. and, and praying and thinking that this situation is dead or beyond your ability. Lord, we have friends who've been giving a diagnosis mm-hmm. of cancer mm-hmm. and it's serious. Mm-hmm. Um, one of our friends has been just given days and it's so easy, Lord, to say, okay, well, that's it. Throw up our hands. There's the diagnosis. Uh, it's been rubber stamped. It's, we just, you know, Lord, um, it is what it is. No, Lord, we, we pray that your will be done. Mm-hmm. We pray that you intervene. We pray that you bring healing and recovery. And, and Lord, that we would see your glory that where some see death on the horizon, God, you see resurrection. Mm-hmm. And I pray that, Lord, in our lives, where we see death on the horizon, that, God, you would bring resurrection to those things that you want to bring resurrection to. Mm-hmm. And, and we leave our friends, Vince and Galena, in your hands, Lord, knowing yes. that you are the resurrection and the life and, and are. that you do show mercy mm-hmm. to thousands. Mm-hmm. And, Lord, we pray for your mercy and your grace, yes. for your forgiveness, that, Lord, where we have, where we have not believed. Mm-hmm. where we have lacked faith, mm-hmm. where we have not trusted you. Mm-hmm. Lord, we pray. We know we're forgiven. We know Christ has died for us. Amen. Praying that you apply the cross, yes. the blood of Christ to our lives, and that, mm-hmm. God, you would continue to be determined to save us and redeem mm-hmm. us, yes. to grow our faith. Mm-hmm. We want to be like Jesus. Amen. Lord, there are people right now praying with us, Mm-hmm. And they are calling on you, hoping on you, mm-hmm. trusting in you. And I'm praying mm-hmm. that, Lord, you would respond mm-hmm. to their faith, their trust in you. Mm-hmm. That, Lord, we know that you answer prayer mm-hmm. in relation to our, our relationship with you. Mm-hmm. And so I am praying that, God, we would have a sense of your will, mm-hmm. that we would pray and live and move in mm-hmm. and through according to your word. And now tonight, Lord, as we wrap up our study, we thank you for Jesus Amen. and Lord, for this story. And Lord, we see and we believe mm-hmm. and we ask that, Lord, you would move into our lives. Yes. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, Sarah, thank you for joining me tonight. For those of you who are on Facebook, those of you who will be watching later on on YouTube, Thank you for being with us. God bless. Have a good night. Folks, the Pathfinders are leading out on Sabbath. Um, I pray that you'll be there to join them and support them. This coming Sabbath, we have now three people who are going to be baptized in an outdoor baptism. People I've been uh, studying with now for some time, praising God for that. Um, So please remember them in your prayers. God is good all the time. All the time. We love you. He's good. Absolutely. Everybody, you have a good night and God bless. God bless, Pastor. Good night. Good night.